So I'm going to start with the carded core wool. It's a mixed breed and it felts really quickly. And we're going to start with the body. So we're just going to take a big clump and roll it all together as tightly as you can. And then use one of your coarser needles. I'd probably go for a 32 or a 36. I'm using a 36 at the moment. And just keep moving it round. Secure all them fibres into place. So you want to make sure that you've roughly got the right size of your template which is it will be included in the kit and all the templates are to scale so you can keep checking the sizes fibre will go in whichever way you stab so if you need to make a flat side which is what we need to do in a moment I'm just going to keep turning it over so I'm going to make this side flat so this bit will be the head I'm going to have the arms coming out here and then the bottom legs coming out here turn that over I'm going to flatten this side a little bit against my template quickly okay so this is where the head's going to be and we need to move this over slightly so now I'm going to stab this part into place and once we've got the basic template shape we can start to firm it up and then add more wool if we need to Bend that over a little. Okay, I'm just going to check against the template again. Okay, this is going to be the chest and the stomach area. So I'm just going to felt that down a little. Still using the 36G, so we use the 36 mainly for shaping. You can use a 32 if you're more comfortable. I'm just going to check that against the template again. Not too far off. This bit is where it's going to be standing, so I'm going to make sure that that bit's flat. It's still quite soft, so I'm going to add another layer.
Okay, I'm just going to check that against the template again. Doesn't look too bad. So we're going to be adding the arms here and the back legs here, so this needs to be a little slimmer. Starting to firm up now. And check the template again. So on the template, this section here dips a little before the spine comes out. So I'm going to fill that piece in there. go a little more okay We're almost there. I'm just going to switch to the 38G needle now just to smooth this surface a little bit. Okay, that was looking good for the body so far. Need to flatten that bottom end of the leg again. So I'm not making this extra firm just yet because we're going to add the arms and the legs and then over the arms and legs I'll put another layer of the core on top so it will firm up again at that stage and then again when we add the top layer, the colour layer. So next I'll go on to the arms, again taking some of the carded core wool and I'm just going to roll this up too much there. So 
I'm going to use this end for the pause. So we're just going to make a long cylinder shape to start with for the front paws. I'm just going to keep turning. So it keeps the shape circular for now. I'm going to make this end thinner. This is where the paw will be. I'm not going to keep the paws quite simple. I'm not going to define each claw. It's pretty simple. So now I'm just flattening it on the top and the bottom with the 38G. That looks okay. So this end we're going to make a little fatter. I'm going to roll around another layer at this end. So I'm not going to make this end into a cylinder, I'm going to flatten it out a little bit. Keep turning it over. It's okay if you leave this end a little loose because we're going to flatten it a little when it when we attach it to the body anyway so it doesn't really matter at the moment so this is the starting shape and then we need to bend it into position so following the template we need to bend it here so we're just going to hold it in position and then felt into that crease. Yeah. And then to hold it in, into shape, I'm going to do some diagonal felting. 
from this side and then from the other side and flip it over and do the same again. This will help keep its shape. And then we're going to bend the paw down slightly. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to pull it up into position and then felt into the crease. See that already? It's starting to take shape. Watch those fingers. Gonna check that against the template. Yep, we're almost there. I'm just gonna make this a little smaller. looking good so I'll show you now the arm will be going here and then we're going to make the same for the other side and we'll do this leg next taking some more of your core wool roll it up into a circular shape but not into a ball so it'll be a flat flat-ish disc shape again starting off with the 36g or 32 if you prefer just gonna carefully make this into a round disc I'm just going to check that against the template. Yep, that's looking good. So we're going to make the foot back paw. I'm going to roll some of the core.
I like to taper it off a little bit and then this will be the pore end and then we'll attach this here like that but first I'm just going to firm it up just because it's easier to firm firm up the pour before you attach it using the 38G at the moment. to add a little bit more to the top of the foot. In the felting pen that I'm using now, I'm just using two 40G needles. You can put three needles in there, um, but I find it can alter the shape too much. So I just like to use the two. So here I'm just bulking out the end of the foot a little bit. check that against the template it's looking good So that will attach onto there. I'm just going to add a little bit more of this because it's quite squidgy at the moment. So it's still quite squidgy at this stage, but that's okay. Because we're going to add another layer when we attach it to the body and then it'll firm up then. So 
So check this against your template. About there. And then we can use the loose fibres that we left at the end to felt it on. Okay, now we can add a little more core over the join and that will help to attach and blend the shapes together. Very nearly got myself in. <laughs> So when we're felting pieces together, make sure that you're not just felting the foot into the other piece, you need to felt from both sides. Otherwise you'll easily be able to pull it off. Right, I'm just going to check against the template. That's okay. So now I'll be able to show you the three shapes together. So this one will go here, just slightly in front of the tummy. And the arm will go here. And then because these bits are still quite squidgy, we can felt them down a little and blend them into the body shape more. So I'm going to make these two again and then I'll come back when I've done them. Okay so I've done the other two legs and I'm just going to quickly show you how it all comes together and then we'll move on to the head. So you can see this already coming together they stick out quite a bit at the moment, but that's okay because there's still quite a lot of felting to do. Cute. So let's move on to the head. So to make the head, we're going to make two main shapes. And you'll have them both on your template sheet. I'm going to start by rolling the wool. There. 
this is going to need to be around 15 millimeters that way I'm just going to roughly do this piece And then I'm going to check it against my template. Again, we don't need to make this piece too hard or firm at this point because we've got lots more to add. So we're just kind of making an oval. The first shape. Keep checking it against your template. So now I've got that shape roughly correct. I'm going to use this piece here as the front because it tapers in just a touch. And this is where the, the cheeks and the, the nose is going to go. So I'm just going to taper that in a bit more. So you can see now that that's more pear shaped and the nose will come down here and the mouth will go underneath so that's the first section and then for the top bit i'm going to roll another piece of wool not too much I'm going to leave the ends of this fairly loose so that we can blend it into the head. Check against your template. So this bit's going to go directly across the middle. This bit here is going to come down to the nose. And then we can use the rest of the loose fibre just to attach there.
Okay, so we've roughly got that on and we're going to give him some little cheeks. So let's roll up another piece of wool. We're going to cover up all the shapes to blend them together. So don't worry too much about this at this stage. for the other side. Make sure that they're level. Sticking out a little bit at the moment, but that's okay. And then we're going to just fill this little section here. This is behind where the eyes will go. Your eyes will go in this section here and do the same on the other side. Everything symmetrical. Check against your template. That's okay. So now we're just going to cover the whole thing in a thin layer of the core wall just to blend everything together. Use the felting pen for this bit, just makes it a little bit quicker. And with the pen having the 40G needles in it, it gives you a, a smooth surface and it doesn't change the shape too much.
<clears throat> Make sure that we've got the eyes in the right place. Gonna chuck that against the template. I've lost the pear shape a little bit there, so I'm just putting that bit in. So if you look underneath. shape that we're looking for. So this end will be where the nose is here and then we can add a little mouth underneath right, later when we put some of the colour on and when we put the eyes in. So here's our eye sockets. Show everything symmetrical again. Okay, I think we're ready to glue in the eyes. So I've got the seven millimeter black glass eyes to put in. Usually I'd put these in with an awl. Um, however, if you don't have one, you can gently do it with one of the felting needles. So I'll just use this 36G as an example. So we're just going to go right into the middle, right through, give it a good wiggle, and poke the eye right in there, just like that. And then to glue it in, I use some super glue, but you can use any PVA or any household glue, that's fine. I just like to use that because it's instant. And before I glue this one in, I'm just going to check that it's going in at the same place in the same side. So let's just check that they're symmetrical. Yep. You only need a tiny bit of this. If you get too much of it, you won't be able to felt the wool around the outside because the wool will just go stiff. Okay, so that's that done. So we're going to add some of the colour to the hands, um, sorry, the paws um, and to the head before we add them to the body, just because it's easier that way. So place that to one side. I'll start with the, the back feet. And I'm going to use the carded merino fawn. It's a lovely finish and it's so soft and smooth. Okay, so I'm not going to do this part, I'm just going to do the paw 
because we need to attach this to the body and I will put another piece of core over the top of that to secure it. So we're just doing the feet at the moment. And to add this, I'm going to use the 40G, the pink needle. And I'm going to do the ends of the paws in white, so I'm not going to totally cover that bit. So I'm just going to bring it round. So we don't need to do any of this bit. This is going to be attached to the body. So it's going to be the right side. But you will see this section here, so we need to do that. So when you're adding the top coat, just make sure you're not putting the needle too far in. And once the wool is secure, to finish, I take the 42G needle and just stab really gently at a 45 degree angle. And then this gets rid of any stab holes that you might see So for the end of the foot, I've lost my colours, here they are. I'm going to use the, the natural coloured merino. So that's going to go over there. And then I'll blend that in. So to blend 
one colour into the other. I'm just adding both colours <clears throat> and then for the transition of the changeover in the middle I'm going to mix both colours together and then it will seem less harsh. So there you can just see where I've just added the natural straight over the top. So if you just take some of the, the main body colour and then mix it with some of the natural by hand. Maybe a little bit more. So now if you add that colour just in the middle between the two, you'll be able to see the gradient of the natural going into the fawn merino. And I'm just going to do this really gently with a 42G needle. It just makes it look more natural. You only need a tiny bit and it makes a big difference. Add a bit more on that side. I'm happy with that. It's the first foot. Done. So I'll do the second foot and then I'll come back. So I've finished both of the back paws. They're ready to be attached. And now I'm just going to do exactly the same on the front paws so I'm gonna do this forearm in the colour and then gradient it out into the merino natural just the same as I did the feet so I'll do that and then I'll come back so now we've done all the paws we're gonna work on the head and I'm gonna start with the nose so in your kit you'll have some of this caramel and I'm going to mix a little bit of that with the merino fawn and we're going to use that for the nose. I do want it to be quite a light shade. So I'm going to add a little bit more. It's 
And then because we've added some of the, the fawn colour, it's going to make it blend into the face rather it be in a block colour. So I'm just going to felt that into a little point for the nose. Lift it off, turn it over, felt again. So we're going to attach this just to the front of the nose and I'm going to just overhang it just slightly just over the front of the face. And then once you've got the nose felted on, we're just going to blend the rest of the colour up into the head. It does look a bit odd right now, but it all will come together, I promise. <laughs> So once it's filtered on, I'll then smooth it out with the 42G. So then for the rest of the mouth area, we can now felt a line on the tip of the nose right underneath to around here and this is where the mouth's going to go Now we've got that roughly secured, we can cover this bit in the natural. I'm just going to do each side of the face individually and then I won't lose the shape. And just blend that into the rest of the head. Same for the other side.
think that bit's sticking out a little bit too far. Let me check it with my template. some black around the eyes and we're going to make the eyes into a diamond shape Don't worry about the black too much. I'm going to surround the black with some white in a moment. So I'm just going to add some of the fawn colour around that. I'm going to leave the bottoms of the cheeks down here um, in the natural colour, which I will go over. With the overlay um, over the fawn shortly. So we're going to start with the fawn colour from the nose here. And then I just kind of let that drop naturally where it wants to go. go above the eye I'm not going to worry about doing the back of the head yet because we need to attach it to the body um, and then we'll be going over with the top coat.
So we're going to add that white around the eye. I'm going to roll, I'm just going to roll it between my fingers. The heat and the friction will help it to felt a little bit before we put it on. And then we're just going to go right around the edge of the black that we put in there earlier. A little more. be able to see now that it's coming to life a little bit Check that against the body now. Yep. So under the eyes, on the grey squirrels, usually a little red. So I'm going to mix some of the uh, cognac colour with the fawn. And then we're going to put a bit of that under the eye. Need a tiny bit. Going to add a little more up to the nose. Just a bit.
<clears throat> okay, so before I add the natural underneath, we need to add the mouth. So I'm going to felt the mouth first and then attach that. That's where we're at. So I'm just going to felt the mouth out of the, the natural so would cover it anyway and it's only a small piece. So I'm just going to roll up some of the wool. I'm just going to leave the end loose so we can blend that, blend that piece into the head. So I'm just going to put that on underneath. You can have a look, see if it looks. Whoops! <laughs> Get it in position. And then hold it up against your template to make sure it's in the right place. And then we can felt it on. Using all them loose fibres, which goes on really easily. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna cover it with another layer of the natural merino blend it all together. So we've already done the cheeks so I don't need to go up there. So I'm just felting a little deeper around the mouth area so we don't lose the detail. Okay, so now we can see the mouth. So I'm just going to do the same on the other side um, and then I'll show you the blending of the natural into the fawn again. So now I've done the same on the other side. We're going to do the natural merino blend over the cheeks here. So we'll just we've already got the natural merino down there, so I'm just going to take a very thin layer and just overlap it very slightly. into the face very, very shallow stabs
Now I'm going to do the same again, a very thin layer, but this time with the mixed natural and fawn colour merino. a very thin layer again Okay, so now we've got that side blended, I'm going to do the other side. You see the difference? Try not to go too far up, I don't want to lose the cognac colour that we added earlier.
Okay, now that's done, we can put the mouth detail on. Um, when I look at the squirrel pictures online, I can see a very slight tint of pink to the mouth area. So we're going to take a little bit of pink and I'm going to mix it with some of the fawn. Just a tiny amount. That should do. Just going to check that. So this is going to go from the nose down to the mouth and then around the mouth area. You only need the tiniest bit. It just gives you the hint of where the mouth is. And because you've mixed the pink with the fawn, it doesn't make it stand out as much as if you were just to add pink. I'm just twisting it in my fingers there, just helps too. Put it into place. And I felt it right deep in there, just so that it looks more like a shadow than a line that's been stuck on. It's looking more realistic now so this is all we're going to do for the head so far um, and then once we've attached it and added the final top layer we can also add the ears at the same time I forgot to add the detail under the nose so I'm just going to show you that now I've just mixed a little bit of the black with the fawn um, and rolled it together. You only need the tiniest bit just to make that area highlighted just gives it a little bit more definition that's it so now we can add all the pieces to the body so i'm going to start off by checking the template the body is sits at a little bit of an angle and then the face is facing forward. So when attaching the limbs, we want to felt from the body into the head all the way around. And then we're going to felt from the head into the body to make sure that we've got a really secure fit. A 
and because we left the body still a little squidgy we can still reshape it how we need to around the head so we're going to need to go around this quite a few times to get the, the secure fit And you can you can sew on the pieces if you'd prefer. I just prefer to do it this way, but it's up to you. And remember as well, we've still got to add the top coat which will again make it more secure check that it's in a central position and now I'm going to go just around the edge from the head into the body we're going to be adding more colour over this part anyway so don't worry too much at this stage. That's pretty secure already. So I'm just going to check that up against the template again just to make sure that we've got it in the right position. Yep, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go with the back leg next and I'm going to just make sure that that overhangs the tummy just a little bit and make sure that it's in line at the bottom. So we can secure this one all over because we want to blend it into the body a little bit more it's sticking out quite far at the moment so we do want to felt that down a little bit and then we'll add another layer of the core wall to get rid of the seam there the join again I'm just going from the leg into the body at the moment and then I'll try and get it from the body into the leg like this way and that'll help to tangle the fibres more
okay just check that against your template make sure it's in the right position again yep and now we can go for the front leg already see that one's gone quite flat there already so I'm just gonna go over those with a little bit of coral and then this will make sure that they're nice and secure and then once they're on we'll do the other side and then we can cover the west the rest of the squirrel with the colour and go over that with a 42 pen just to smooth it out you can just do this with the single 40 with that just go over the back leg so you can just see by adding just a little bit of the coral all over the joints that it blends all the shapes together
okay so you can see just by adding that top layer there it's brought all the shapes together nicely and it makes it look more natural so i'm going to do the other side and then i'll come back so i've finished attaching both sides um just before i do cover it in the top coat i'm just going to add the ears to the head first I'm just going to use the fawn colour. I'm just going to felt it flat. Then turn it over. And then we're going to fold in the edges to make the ear shape. So because of we're felting into the mat, we do need to keep turning it over. Make sure it doesn't stick to the cover. going to add a little bit of shading colour. I'm going to add a little bit of the cognac with the fawn. I'm going to put that in the middle there. I'm just going to check that against the template. Yep. So I'm going to use the loose fibres at the bottom there to attach the ear on. Just like that, just towards the back of the eye, around there. Before I do that, I'm just going to make the other one. Add that cognac and fawn mixture to the middle.
the map there. Going to go about there. I'm just going to tack that on roughly, and then I'm going to put the other one into shape. I'm just going to felt all those loose fibres into the back of the head. And then I'm going to shape these ears a little bit more. So I'm going to bring them in at the edges. Just rounds them off a little bit. To the other side. poking in any loose fibres that are sticking out there. Okay, so I'm going to add the top coat and I'm just going to leave the backside area here because we still need to add the tail. So everything apart from this section here um, and the chest and the, the tummy, we're going to leave the chest and the tummy till last. Um, so we can overlay the fawn colour, we can blend it into the, into the natural again as we did before. I'm just going to go up to the tummy and stop there.
So I'll go ahead and cover the rest of the body and then I'll come back. So now I've covered the squirrel in the fawn colour, I'm going to start on the tail. So you'll need your piece of copper wire and I'm going to bend it into the shape of my template. And I'm going to cover this section in a pipe cleaner, but I'm going to leave the ends because we're going to put this into the squirrel to secure it into place. So. Take your pipe cleaner and just wrap it around. This will help when we put the core wall around the tail, it will just help it to keep in place. And there we go, I'm just going to snip off the end. So in the kit I've put some of the mixed breed sliver this will make it easier to wrap around rather than pulling chunks off the core wall and trying to stretch it out so i'm going to split this in half i'm just going to secure it at one end with my finger and then just wrap it around We won't need to put too much of the core wool on. It's just so that we've got some a base to felt into to make the fluffy tail. So that's it for the first layer. And then I'm gonna go over I'm gonna go over it again. Exactly the same method. Gently felt that to secure. Just make sure that you're going down the sides of the armature, otherwise, you'll break your needles. Just gently down the side. And then that will just help it to keep it in place. So to start off with, we're going to take the fawn colour and pull off a few pieces. And then what I like to do is just belt it at the ends a little bit. Turn it over. And then we're going to wrap this bit around the tail. 
So we're not going to felt the loose fibers. And I'm going to wrap this. Around and then felt it into place. Hear me hitting the armature there. <laughs> Need to be gentle, make sure you don't snap those needles. Okay, so that's the first layer, and we're going to leave this loose and we're going to go round it again a little bit further down. So pull off a few pieces of the fibre again, and this time I'm going to include some of the cognac colour and I'm just going to mix that up a little bit just try to pull the fibres apart rather than snapping them because we need the length okay so again out at the ends. Turn it over. And then again, just a little bit further down, I'm going to felt it into place. And there's our second layer. Okay, comb it out a little bit. And then we're going to keep on with that method all the way down the tail until we hit the end. So I'm going to do that and then I'll come back. So now I've finished covering the tail, we can put him together. So to do it, I'm just going to make a hole close to the bottom. I'm just going to use my felting needle. Because we've left this bit quite loose still, it should go in quite easily. That in right in there. Make sure that it all goes together all right. It's in the right position. And then what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the base of the tail. 
just to hold it in briefly. Wait for that to dry. And now we're going to go over the bottom part of the tail to make sure that it's well secured. Just watch out for that wire, be gentle. Okay, and now I'm going to try and do the same around the top of the tail. A little more tricky at this stage. And once it's secured, we can always add a little bit more to the base of the tail there. So now I'm just going to cover up the rest of the patchy areas.
Don't worry if it looks a little bit messy. I quite like it like that. Nice and bushy. Um, so the last thing we have to do is add the natural colour to the tummy and the chest. So as we did before, I'm going to mix a bit of the fawn with the natural to make the gradient of colour blend in better. I'm going to add some of the mixed cognac and fawn just underneath the front legs. Just around there.
and then we're adding the mixed colour from the tummy. Just up under the arm. So I'm going to do the same on the other side and then I'll come back. So now I've finished the other side and I've also added the natural to the rest of the tummy and the chest. We can finish off the face and add the whiskers. So to finish off, I'm going to mix a bit of the natural with some of the cognac. We only need a tiny bit. And we're just going to add a little bit of that to the side of the nose. just makes the the mouth area quite not as bold with all the natural just helps to blend all the colors together Add some to the other side. Okay, so now we can add the whiskers and to do that, what I normally do is just ever so slightly take it through your nail and then you'll see that it will get a bit a natural curve and then if you hold it at the base then gently poke it in. Then we're going to repeat that process until we've got enough whiskers and then I'll add just a tiny bit of the super glue to hold that in place. So I'm going to finish that off and then I'll come back with the end result. Okay, so they're all glued on and he's all finished.
I'm just going to give him a little acorn to hold and that's it.